you are basically your brain you are entrapped in this body that's too much of philosophy let's get started <laughs> So I'm planning to do a complete month of only the nervous system, which is my favorite part. I really want to become a neurologist, maybe. Let's see. Uh, let's start with the classification of nervous system, and we're also going to learn the different kinds of cranial nerves. You're supposed to remember all of them for neat. So yeah, let's get started with classification. It's a very simple topic. So when you think of nervous system, the first thing you can think about is your brain. Okay. but along with the brain there are millions of other things which help in the proper functioning of the nervous system so a nervous system is classified into central and peripheral central just imagine it as the center of your body so the brain and the spinal cord make up the central nervous system peripheral is the one which spreads from the brain and spinal cord towards the rest of the body that will be your nerves the different nerves So there are two kinds of nerves again sensory and motor sensory nerves as the name suggests it, those are the nerves which collect nervous impulses from different parts of the body and send a signal to your brain and motor nerves or efferent nerves they uh, send the signal from your brain to different parts of the body now motor nerves are also divided into two parts one is somatic and one is autonomic somatic is always uh it's for your skeletal muscles like somatic uh, efferent nerves they control the voluntary movements of your body like suppose you have to move this hand the somatic nervous system will send a signal through the motor uh, neuron to this hand and it moves okay and autonomic is for the visceral organs visceral organs are the organs which are deep inside like heart etc and they mostly involve involuntary movements that is which is not conscious so autonomic nervous system is again divided into sympathetic and parasympathetic now sympathetic and parasympathetic are antagonistic antagonistic ka matlab hai the functions of sympathetic nervous system are countered by parasympathetic nervous system they help in maintaining a balance and depending on the situation uh, both of them work so I'll tell you a few functions of the parasympathetic nervous system now. Basically, parasympathetic nervous system and sympathetic nervous system. Let's look at it this way. Sympathetic nervous system helps in increasing the body's activity. So its functions you can write as it increases adrenaline and noradrenaline. As you know, adrenaline is the hormone which is released when a person is in stress. So it increases body activity, heart rate. so adrenaline it increases heart rate it increases urine formation and exactly opposite it does two other functions that is it helps in dilation of the pupil not constriction so pupil dilation and finally it slows down digestion and the secretion of digestive enzymes and salivary enzymes so slows down digestion so these are the functions of the sympathetic nervous system and as i told you it's completely antagonistic for the parasympathetic nervous system so whatever the functions of this is there the complete opposite will happen because of parasympathetic so basically parasympathetic reduces the secretion of adrenaline it reduces heart rate it reduces urine formation it increases the digestion and salivary enzyme secretion and it also constricts the pupil so that is the entire classification of nervous system now we are going to talk about two kinds of nerves there are basically 31 spinal nerves the nerves that arise from your spine and there are 12 cranial nerves cranial is always referred to the brain so there are 31 spinal nerves and 12 cranial nerves and for neat you're supposed to know the 12 cranial nerves and their functions if they're sensory motor or both of them so i'll be telling you that you know pretty simple way maybe <laughs> okay i've written 12 names on the board and you might be wondering what they are they're basically the 12 cranial nerves you just have to know one function of them which you can figure out just by looking at the name 
okay and these nerves are basically arranged in roman numerals starting from 1 to 12 on the basis of if uh, like suppose your head is this way this the nerve that starts from the beginning i am stupid okay okay so i've written 12 names on the board you might be wondering what they are they're just the cranial nerves the 12 cranial nerves and they're arranged in roman numeral order according to which nerve comes first when you look uh, from the front side like yahan se olfactory yahan se optic so in that way and we just have to learn one function of them we have to learn whether they're sensory or motor and we have a few mnemonics for that which i'll be teaching you today okay the first one is olfactory you've been learning since grade 10 i think that olfactory refers to the nose and uh, stuff related to the nose so it's used for smelling and since this is a sensory nerve this is used to sense smells okay the second one is optic optic also you've learned that signals go from the retina from the photoreceptor cells of the retina to the brain to the optic center in the brain via the optic nerve so this is for seeing and this is also sensory okay now these two nerves are motor okay so oculomotor is oculo matlab eye and motor is movement okay so this is used to constrict the eye and focus the eye on objects and to constrict and dilate the pupil so this is for focusing eye trochlear is also used for eye movements only but it helps in movement of the eye up down and sideways so this is for movement of the eye in uh, different places now the fifth one is trigeminal now it's called as trigeminal because it senses the face ke sensations from three parts of the face it divides the face into three parts so this is for sensation all right and trigeminal is both so it's both sensory and motor okay and uh, yeah that is done for trigeminal now the sixth one is abducens okay so there is this motion abduction when you lift your hand away from your body or any part of your body away from the midline of your body so basically you can remember it this way when you make your eyes go to the sides like this way you are uh, moving it away from the midline of the body so that way you can remember that abducens is for move for the lateral movement of eyes okay yeah so abducens is for the lateral movement of the eye and this is just a motor now let's come to the seventh nerve that is facial facial is both a motor and sensory nerve and facial nerve is used for uh, the sensations of the face for moving the face for salivation and also for tear production so saliva and moves face and you can figure that out because iske naam mein hi face hai anyways next one is the eighth one that is vestibulo cochlear so vestib uh, when you learn about the ear you will learn that ear is used for two functions one is for hearing and one is for balance so the vestibulo part of this is for uh, for the balance of our body you learn why that happens when we're going to learn about ear later and cochlear is uh, refers to the hearing part of the ear okay so this is sensory okay this is for hearing and balance all right we're done with the eighth one let's come to the ninth one glossopharyngeal okay glossopharyngeal whenever you hear about glosso you should always relate that to your tongue and uh, your mouth or your taste and swallowing etc okay so this is for tasting and swallowing so this is also both matlab it's both motor and sensory okay and let's come to 
vagus okay now vagus nerve is very important it's a very diverse nerve and it helps in almost every other activity ranging from the head to the thoracic region heart and digestion for the movement of the alimentary canal for controlling the heart rate so it's a diverse nerve with diverse functions okay and it's obviously both sensory and motor okay let's come to the last two both of these are just motor nerves accessory nerve is used for movement of the neck okay and you can remember that because accessories accessories are what we wear what girls wear that is necklaces etc so accessory nerve for the movement of the neck and hypoglossal as i already told you glossal you can always relate it to uh, taste and swallowing and since it's a motor nerve you can call hypoglossal a nerve which helps in movement of the tongue so we're done with that Okay, you've learned all of this, but how to remember it is what I'm going to tell you. Two mnemonics which my teacher taught. Uh, two mnemonics which my teacher taught me were first for remembering the names. That is, O O O, like the expression O, to touch and feel very good velvet as heaven. It makes no sense, but you trust me, you'll remember it. Okay, because O O O, it starts with O first, and then yeah, eventually re you'll remember it. You can just. read it out from here this is very messy but anyways the second mnemonic which i really like is how to remember which one is sensory and which one is motor for this you just have to remember the series that is 12 hai so o is related to olfactory etc so sensory and motor ke liye some say money matters but my brother says big brains matter more Okay, I'm just gonna write it down for you. Okay, I've written down the mnemonics, so you can note it down from here. O O O to touch and feel. Very good, velvet as heaven. Makes no sense again, but okay. The second mnemonic, my favorite one. Some say money matters, but my brother says big brains matter more. So some in this is for S is for sensory, money, or M is for motor, and B is both sensory and motor. Okay. Well done. All right. So thank you so much for watching this video. This was it, and I think I'll be uh, starting with the structure of neuron, etc., for the next class. Before that, I've actually gotten a really good response for the CVSE result video that resulted in many of you getting to know about me, and also you asking me about what all books I use. So. by this week or in the next two weeks i think i'll make a video on the books i'll use so thank you so much for watching